Welcome back to 5-Minute Metadata. In this video, we are going to be talking about CSVs and how they can be used to store data. So, what does CSV stand for? It stands for Comma Separated Values. But what does that actually mean? It's a way of storing data. To show how this is done, let's look at an example of data. Over Christmas, I went home to visit my family in the U.S. I went from Canberra, Australia to Chicago, Illinois, and it was important for me to keep track of all my flights. Each flight had a flight number, a departure time, a flight duration, and a seat number. And keeping track of all that data meant that I could get home on time and see my family for Christmas. By laying data out in a table, it makes it easy to look up information. But how can we take a table of information like this and put it into the computer? The easiest way to input data is to type it into a file. Each row of data goes into its own line and we use commas to separate the values in the columns. Storing data in this way is easy for both people and computers to both read and write. And that's a CSV. But now there are some problems that can arise when you write out data like this. Like, what happens when some of your values have commas in them? Say, just for fun, on your way home, you want to make a little detour and make a pit stop in Germany. And in Europe, they use a comma instead of a dot to separate decimal points, like in a duration of time. For example, in the US, an hour and a half would be written as 1.5, and in Europe, it would be 1 comma 5. Having something like this would be kind of confusing because if this was inputted into a CSV, it would be considered two different values instead of one. To get around this, for most systems, it's just putting quotes around the values as this helps them interpret the data correctly. If you put quotes, it's considered one value. For different systems where putting quotes doesn't work, then we have to try a different approach. When there are too many different commas for quotations to be practical, then we can use a different separator to indicate spaces between different values. Another common separator that is used in data is the tab key. This inserts an invisible symbol, just like hitting the spacebar inserts an invisible space. While it's hard for a person to tell the difference between these two symbols, the spacebar and the tab key, a computer can tell quite easily. A reason why the tab symbol is used is so that it pads the data so they all have the same width and all the lines line up on the computer. Because we use the tab key as a new separator, it is no longer considered a CSV. It is now a TSV, which stands for Tab Separated Values. Another way to separate your data is to have no separators, and instead you can put your data into a table and you can pad or trim the values to make sure everything is the same width. This type of format doesn't use delimiters, so it's hard to tell where the data starts and stops. But we can use a data dictionary so you know how to read each entry of data. These are known as fixed width files. All columns are a certain width long, say the flight number, the time, and the origin of the flight are being recorded. If the data is too long for the columns, they would start to go into the next column and create a mess of the data. The metadata tells us that the flight number is four spaces long, time is four spaces, and the origin is six spaces. Eventually, some data formats become too complicated and complex to store in a CSV or TSV. And that's when you have to make a switch to another database, or Excel, which is more complex and stores a lot more information behind the scenes. Because all of my data is stored correctly and easy to interpret and read, I'm ready for my next journey. Thank you for watching, and if you want to know more about metadata, be sure to watch one of our other videos and visit us at aristotlemetadata.com.